Hi guys, so with any luck you'll have just watched me unboxing one of these Orc Bomber kits, okay? So, what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to show you how to paint it. So I'm going to build it up and then I'm going to show you how to paint it. So what I'm going to do now, start cutting out all the bits and then I'm going to do a speed up video of me building it. See you in a sec guys. Hi guys, that is it. The whole thing is built. Um, I went for a burner bomber in the end. By the way, I stopped filming me uh, building it because I thought you'd get a little bit bored. Um, so yeah, just checking if it was recording and it is good. But yeah, I thought you'd get a bit bored of watching me build it. So I'm just going to go through a couple of things that I think you should do to improve this kit. Um, for starters, there's a couple of bits I think you should undercoat by hand. I used the Imperial Primer from Citadel. I know a lot of people have said that it's not undercoat paint, but it seems to work for me, so that's what I've used. Um, just inside these bits. There's some bits that um, have got layers. If you're building any of the other kits, this under here has also got wires. So anything with like wires on it uh, that you don't reckon you're going to be able to catch with your uh, spray paint or spray gun, um, just paint it first by hand. Take a little bit of time. So, also, I've left this guy so you can take him out. I thought that would just be a cool touch if I get a weapon destroyed result or something like that. And also, I quite like being able to spin him round, which is quite fun. I've left the cupolas off because I'm going to leave them uh, where they've gone. I'm going to leave those clear, and I'm going to do another video showing you how to weather those to make them look really dusty like they've been flying around for years uh, using the Model Mate stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go and spray this up, uh, this burner bomber, and I will see you after I've sprayed it black and I'll show you the first stage of painting. By the way, um, there was something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember at the moment. Okay, so I will think about that and try and remember. So I'll see you in a bit, guys. Okay, so whilst I am waiting for the, um, the, uh, what am I saying? Whilst I'm waiting for the model to dry that I've just sprayed, the plane, uh, I'm going to work on the base. So obviously, I want to keep this bit clear, okay, this stand here. I don't want to spray it, so I'm going to have to do the base in a way that I won't have to spray the whole model. So... What I'm going to start off by doing is using the um, 40k basing kit from Games Workshop and I'm going to take a couple of the resin pieces and stick them onto the base, okay? So I'm going to use the thick super glue, hopefully, if it works. Success. And this just kind of breaks the base up a little bit using these... Um, resin pieces. Now there's a lot of companies that do resin pieces that you can put on bases. There's a lot of companies that do resin bases. Um, you can use those if you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. This is just how I'm doing the model. Um, and that applies for the whole video, in fact. So um, <clears throat> just because I'm doing it one way doesn't mean you have to do it the same way. But if you want to, I don't mind. So I'm going to put on a couple of pieces of slate again just to break it up a bit.
Okay. So for now, <coughs> that's it, I think. Excuse me, sorry. So that, I think, yeah, that, I think, will do for now. Um, obviously, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to let that dry, and then we're going to need a pot of texture paint. But where is it? This is the one I'm going to use. Now, on all my orcs, I have kind of... Um, grey bases, like they're going through rubble, like city rubble. So I'm going to be using the uh, Astro Granite Texture Paint from Citadel. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and then I will get on with that and show you how that works. Okay, bit, so guys. the most astute of you will realise that the stones are a different colour. That's not because I've painted them yet, that is because I just did a spray with um, some super glue activator. I forgot that the stuff existed, I forgot that it was in my drawer. I don't use it that often, but there we go. So I've wiped away most of the excess um, activator using a tissue, uh, so it's a little bit fluffy at the moment, but hopefully these stones will dry up soon and then I will paint them up. But in the meantime, I'm gonna paint the Astro Granite on all the black bits, okay? And even a little bit on the resin bits just to get it to tie in a bit. So you need an old rubbishy brush to do this with, quite a coarse brush as well. Um, rubbish, there we go, cool. Okay, so the nice thing about the texture paints is they you can put them on really thick and that's going to look better than putting it on thin, okay? So I tend to just put a big lump of it on and then kind of move it around a bit until I'm happy that it's covered the whole surface because what I've seen is people put it on a little bit too thin and you get, um, or in my opinion a little bit too thin because you get um, kind of patches where it's the right colour but it has no texture. So, there we go. Okay, so it's all done. Um, so I've painted the whole thing with the Astro Granite, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's only a couple of things I do different. I think what I should have done is the bits that I stuck on, I should have painted them before putting the Astro Granite texture paint on. So I'm going to suggest to all you guys, if you're doing this the same way that I am, I would do that. I would paint it before you do any of the texture paints. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let the texture paint dry. I'm going to give it a good hour or two um, whilst I'm working on the plane, which I'll do videos for so it will get mixed around. But leave that to dry, start working on your plane and um, once it's dry I'm going to paint some other bits but more on that later. So I'm just airbrushing this um, with Games Workshop's uh, lead belcher colour. So there we go. You can, obviously, you can paint this on, there's no reason you couldn't. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get this finished up, and I will see you in a bit. Finished painting the uh, bomber. It is now completely painted with the lead belcher paint. And to be honest, it is a bit patchy, but that's not a problem at this stage. Um, it doesn't matter. In fact, it kind of adds to it. So it's quite shiny at the moment though, isn't it? So what I want to do is I want to dull that back. And to do that, I'm going to use Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to put that through my airbrush. Once again, you don't have to do this with an airbrush if you haven't got one. Okay, it's just easier because I have got one. If you haven't got access to one, you can use a spray gun. Games Workshop Cell or Humbrol or whatever, or you can just paint it on. Nice and easy. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Hopefully, I'm going to get started and I'll be started. With you in a sec. The nice thing about airbrushing the shades is that you get a quite nice, even consistency and it doesn't come out shiny. Whereas if you paint it on, it tends to go a bit shiny, OK? 
okay so as you can see here it's just starting to pick up the colour it can take a bit of time but the way it ends up looking for an airbrush is definitely worth it I'm going to do a video once this has been all sprayed up so there we have it that is the um, uh, the darkening of the metal finished um, so yeah this has gotten a bit tighter because of all the paint but I'll probably glue that in, in a bit I'm not sure really I quite like it being able to take it off but yeah so I have noticed I'm missing one of the bombs, I haven't bothered putting it on, so I'm going to have to paint that one separately and stick that on. But as you can see, this is really patchy. Um, what you can do, you can even mix Agrax Earthshade with Nuln Oil, 50-50, and that will really darken it down. But for this, I thought it would be a little bit too dark. So that's my cat, Millie, that you can hear in the background meowing because I won't let her outside. Um, not while some videoing anyway. So, yeah. That's all we want to do for now is get a really patchy, kind of rusty, dirty, metallic look. Um, because what we're going to do, we're going to use the hairspray method, or I'm going to use the hairspray method, to show you guys just how this works. So there we go. Have a go. See you in a sec. Okay. Sorry for the poor lighting, guys. Um, but what I've done is, obviously I've sprayed this up, and I have masked off all the bits I don't want to hit with a colour. So all the bits I want to stay uh, or leave metallic, I've covered with tape and blue tack. I've done this on the little turret that's going to sit in there as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I've coated it with three layers of hairspray, just normal cheap hairspray. Just sprayed it on, let it dry, sprayed it on, let it dry, sprayed it on, let it dry. Three layers. So not too much um, and then I'm going to spray the whole thing black with an airbrush using normal acrylics not primer acrylics so I'm going to go ahead and do that making sure to cover the whole thing except the bits that I've taped off so I'll see you in a sec once I've done that